Mr. Samarasinghe, addressing this session, recited a laundry list of steps the government says it's taking to address accountability and reconciliation. These measures represent little more than cosmetic gestures intended to avoid international action to promote accountability in the country. The Army Court of Inquiry, for instance, had its members picked by General Jayasuya, head of security forces in the conflict's main battle zone. The Sri Lankan government has a long history of failed promises to avoid accountability for serious human rights abuses. Instead of investigating credible claims, the government has consistently rejected them out of hand and questions the motives of those who make them, whether it's the UN Secretary General, the High Commissioner, concerned governments, the media, or human rights organizations. The Sri Lankan government's claims of progress on human rights flies in the face of realities on the ground. Civil society, human rights defenders and journalists critical of the government continue to operate in a climate of fear and repression. In December, two political activists were abducted in Jaffna while preparing to participate in Human Rights Day celebrations. In February, a complainant in a fundamental rights case was abducted two days before his case against police was due to be heard. Fears felt by civil society groups extend beyond Sri Lanka. Last September, activist Sunanda Dasyapriya was attacked in state media for his attendance at an HRC side event and his family threatened. In such a climate, several Sri Lankan human rights groups and victims of abuses who plan to come to the HRC session have decided not to attend out of fear. Madam President, Human Rights Watch maintains its belief that real progress on accountability and justice for victims of abuses by all sides in Sri Lanka can only come through an independent international investigation mechanism. Thank you.